patients, we don't know what to say back or we don't want to hurt their mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. So there's a tip. One of the tips is actually asking about mm -hmm. the weather. So you can ask, how's the weather here in Indonesia, Budi? <laughs> right? Oh, that's actually a good idea. Well, um, I used to be, uh, I used to get offended by all those questions. Mm -hmm. But as I grow older, I learned to answer it more intelligently. Mm. So for example, uh, if if someone asks you, when are you going to graduate? Right. Instead of be, instead of getting offended, you can just ask, oh, after my thesis defense. Ah. That's the fact, right? Smart. You can answer it that way instead of getting mad or something. Of course, that is true. Well, and as I mentioned just now, there are many ways to respond to those uncomfortable and sensitive questions in the family gatherings. but. How should we answer them properly? And to learn the tricks, let's have a talk with a psychologist, Efni Indriani. Hello. Ah. The Efni? <laughs> oh, there she is. Hi. Can you hear us? I think you're still muted. We cannot hear your voice from here. Oh, oh. we're. Um, okay, we're, we're still uh, having yeah. uh, technical difficulties regarding the audio. We hope that the team is fixing it right now. But meanwhile, I want to ask my colleagues here, yes. um, well, what's your most bizarre question that you received during uh, family gatherings? Oh dear, well, um, obviously about kids. Your third child? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, always uh, about that. I'm always blessed to have you know the child that I have now. Yeah. I am blessed. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for that, right? But sometimes you know the elderly would actually ask, as you mentioned, I could, if you only have one child, there's another question for when is the second? <laughs> when you have two children already, the question would be when's the third uh, one? Yes. Like a never-ending. I know. I, I know uh, uh, the, the, uh, the kind of the offended a question for me. Uh, maybe comparing about the cars that you use. Oh, really? Yeah, it could be. It could be uh, ah. a direct or indirect. Material. Uh, you could be just like uh, you have uh, two children and what type of cars uh, are you using uh, for your homecoming. It, it can be a big issue um, for some, uh, some people and some families. Nice, yeah. It is not <laughs> nice, but sometimes people do not realize what they're actually saying or questioning is not nice. Now regarding to that, again, we're going to try to yes. connect. We're going uh, to invite our psychologist of the day for today, Efni Indriani. Efni, can you hear us now? Oh, too bad. We, st we still cannot hear you. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yes, we still have um, audio difficulties here listening to you, Efni. Maybe the team can contact Efni again. Yep. But guys, yes. Because, um, you know, uh, while waiting for our team to contact Matt Efni again, mm -hmm. sometimes we need um, a bigger, um, what do you call that? A bigger emotion, a stable emotion. Oh, look! All yes, right, we so we can you hear now. you, Matt Efni. Hello, Matt Efni. Hello, good um, afternoon. Yes, <laughs> finally, because we're waiting for the proper answer <laughs> yeah, yeah, you for <laughs> some offensive question during exactly, the Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We've been talking, just the three of us, uh, you know, saying things, <laughs> and we don't know whether it's right or wrong, yep. so we have to ask the expert, of, of course. course. So, Mavni, let's get into our first question. Is it, uh, it is so not uncommon to find small talks in family gatherings in Indonesia, let alone yeah. You know, personal and sensitive questions such as planning the plan to get married or dating. Why do you think it's very common here? Is it because of the generation gaps or has it become our culture? Yeah, for the first time, we have to know that Indonesian culture is the collective, is the culture. So everybody wants to give the personal questions to the others. They need to know more uh, everything about the people, and we have to know about it. Okay. So for the collectivistic culture, it's too common uh, if we say, when will you get married, and know about the <laughs> children, and something what related to the personal questions. Okay, that's and if we face the situation, uh, don't be sad or don't be angry. Just control ourselves first, and we have to control our breath so we can prepare the right answer for the question. Okay. So the key is uh, controlling our... Uh, Self-control, self emotion, yeah. right? 
Because sometimes control. Yes, people can actually do that easily, Mefni. But if you are given that question every single year yep. from the same person every <laughs> year, sometimes your yeah, emotion <laughs> lasts out, right? Okay, so many of us are aware that those kind of questions are very, very personal. And for many, it may hurt their feelings. Now, mm -hmm. how do you, as a psychologist, um, have um, you know any tips and also tricks to handle this kind of situation? Yes, um, uncomfortable questions. It's not. Uh, it's not easy to answer. But uh, for the first time, we have to control ourselves first before we answer the questions from the others. And usually, elderly love to ask more uh, about someone personally. And if we cannot answer that, we can ask uh, for the someone who give the personal question to ask, okay, please for, pray for me, mm -hmm. something uh -huh. like that. Mm -hmm. And then we can give our a best smile to the someone who give a questions to us. Oh, it's like so. a twisting answer or a template. Just, oh, it's a good, um, let's say, yeah, a good answer for that. Yeah, please give the best pray for me for your question if, if it's uh, haven't uh, done. To, yeah, to us, yeah? Right. Yeah. So if it's like uh, to your question, uh, Akhir, uh, about, you know, cars or vehicles, you can yeah. say, you know, just pray for me. <laughs> that next year, I will have 100 BMWs. <laughs> but you know what? Okay. It's easier said than done. When you're uh, you're faced with a situation, sometimes you can't help but yeah. be offended or be mad because it's irritating, you know? Self-control, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> Okay, it, it means uh, self-control of your face at the yes. same time. No, <laughs> not no, just I your don't mind. Think I can do that. <laughs> okay, our next question by Avni. If we don't like being questioned like that, mm. should we just be upfront about our feeling so they won't do it again in the future? What do you think about that? In a collectivistic culture, we have to uh, keep our behavior, our facial expression, and our words to it's others. Because in a collectivistic culture, uh, they love uh, togetherness. So if mm. we uh, feel that discomfort with these questions, don't show any kind of expression that we don't like about it. Just smile and take a deep breath and then answer it in an easy way. Something like that. Because sometimes they just want to know. Uh, they don't know. Uh, uh, they don't like to, uh, if uh, they see our uh, facial expression, uh, maybe uh, in an anger expression or something like that. They just need to hear our answer, so just the answer. Mm. Well, um, are there any side effects from being asked the sensitive questions like this? I mean, uh, like for example, maybe for uh, people that has already had children yeah. and being asked, oh, uh, when are you going to have the second child? Maybe it's, it won't hurt their feeling because they already have one child, yeah. but what if what if it uh, what if it is asked to people that has been trying for years to have you know children but haven't succeeded yet? So it it can hurt their feelings, right? What do you think about this? Yes, sometimes uh, the personal question in the collective is the culture can hurt someone. But sometimes we cannot control because uh, it's a part of our collectivistic culture. They love to give the personal question to us. So uh, when we cannot uh, prevent uh, every uh, member of the big family give the mm -hmm. sensitive questions to us, we need to control our heart first. We need to control our negative emotion and just be calm. If we don't want to answer that, um, just smile, I'm sorry, I cannot answer. I still have no answer. Please pray for me more so I can realize what you uh, say to me, something like that. Okay, so it's a, like uh, to get out of the situation, mm. you have to conquer the room first, then you go out winning and putting on your crown, Crazy Eye. You can do it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That keyword, putting <laughs> your crown <laughs> at the end. You win, this, you win the battle. <laughs> mm, that's true. Now, um, Afni, so um, in your point of view, what do you think that should be brought into conversation, family gatherings during, um, you know, tomorrow's Eid al-Fitr without having to hurt someone's um, feelings, especially the elders? 
it will be better for us if we give the natural questions, maybe something related to career and something related to education and what are your plan for the future. That's uh, really uh, better than if we ask the sensitive or personal questions because sometimes uh, when someone feels so discomfort with these questions, uh, we can uh, make uh, the situation become more, more uh, uncomfortable for mm -hmm. someone. So it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. So we should to more uh, increase our empathy to the uh, member of the family. So we have to think first before we give the questions to the others. Wow. Right. So I have one more question, Krisia. Yeah. So you've mentioned a lot about the collectivist, uh, collectivistic um, culture. And then you've mentioned about how, to, uh, how should we uh, like, uh, react to that uh, kind of situation by firstly uh, controlling ourselves. But please, can you elaborate more? I mean, uh, if we have done at that stage, what the other step we should do until we can uh, fully uh, like winning, winning the situation? Is it only enough for just controlling ourselves and our uh, facial uh, expression and gesture? Uh, meanwhile, we, we, we need also to calm ourselves at a time and then uh, just naturally the situation. What other tips from the psychological uh, point of view, from your point of view, to um, yeah, yeah. win the battle? <laughs> okay, we can use the anger management strategy, mm. okay? For the first time, uh, please control your breathing because if you can control it, uh, any kind of uh, physical state of your body will become more natural mm. than before. So we can take a deep breath and then release and then try uh, to make a beautiful smile and then take a deep breath for the second time, release and then try to answer the questions because it's uh, one of the simple way to control our brain uh, and behavior. Mm. So our brain need uh, about uh, 10 or until 20 seconds uh, to control uh, the or to neutralize the anger by controlling the breathing and by controlling the facial expression and then try to answer the question. All right. Something All right. Like that. I think, I think uh, really... for this year, it won't be too hard to control the facial expression because we're still wearing the mask, right? <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> just use your mask. <laughs> we, we just need to control our eyes. <laughs> Smile with the eyes. Yes, that's true. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Sometimes people can guess uh, uh, someone's expression from the... Uh, eyes expression of course so yeah. we just smile can we can show <laughs> something like this and then there's difference with our eyes posture all right thank you so much Mbafni, for being here with us today stay safe and stay healthy bye-bye bye okay bye. bye thank you bye, bye. bye. Well, one thing that I can highlight from this discussion is that we need we actually need to understand the background behind all these uncomfortable questions yeah.